okay, this this time I want to say, so, Cooter, you've Cooter. been <laughs> open on a few occasions about... about I, well, you know, I'm not proud of it, but, you know, I've been, it's been part of my life for the last 15 years, so... Well, you know, I'm curious. I don't know how willing you are to talk about it or what you're willing to talk about, but since you have parts of it that you are willing to talk about, I'm curious to hear this story. I've never been addicted to a opiate. I've been addicted to other drugs, but not an opiate. So um, it sounds like you were because you're on methadone and yeah. only given to former heroin addicts, right? Yeah, and I've never done heroin. Um, it started when I was pregnant with my first daughter and something happened I don't remember what exactly it was it was something I had I had pain I had some pain and the doctor was just probably way too generous with with the with the opiates and he gave me a prescription for hydrocodone and it's it all started there and then and then what? he just kept giving them to me throughout the pregnancy and then I have I have I have three children so through all three of my pregnancies he gave me hydrocodone so by the time, you know, I was addicted, you know, you know, within the first few months of taking it, you know, regular regularly. So and then uh, after I had my last daughter, uh, I just realized, you know, I can't go on like this. I can't just be chasing that, you know, and I couldn't get it from him anymore. So I went and checked into a methadone clinic. It's kind of did it. It, it obviously didn't. And that was in and that was in 2001. Now, did that, that's, that's safe to take when you're pregnant or what? That's what, apparently, I mean, they did even you, suggested that I get on methadone when I was pregnant. I didn't do that. But did your, the kids, doctor, did your kids come out okay? They're fine. They're absolutely fine. As far oh, as I can is, tell, I mean, they, they seem fine. They're, yeah. Oh, well, one of them still likes to pee in the corner, but uh, <laughs> they're, they're good. They're good. <laughs> my phone? Oh, and I uh, assumed if it, okay. actually I'm not going to take this call. I don't want to. Have I assume I assumed if it was my OBGYN giving it to me, that it must be okay. Well, I mean that's the thing. The OBGYN may you know, have a list. I of, was just a teenager. I was just a teenager. What kind of pain were you in? Well, it was something at first, and with my uh, first pregnancy, it was uh, with my tailbone. Like I would, it would hurt really, really bad to sit. I was like this little 105 pound five foot three girl I was only 16 when I got pregnant and when I shot up like when I started getting bigger it, it would just hurt to sit really bad and so I went to him and he suggested a, he gave me a prescription it started out with that and then I got this donut thing to sit on and then and then after that I got addicted so then it was just me kind of making excuses you know to get to get more I see and they were afraid to not give it to me because he knew at that point I was addicted. And if they do take it away at, at that point, then, then you know, you can lose the, the child. So. Right. Well, that's kind of, yeah. That's that's crazy. Uh, it is. I, I, my guess is the OGBYN has a list of specific kind of painkillers that are proven to be safe for pregnant women, and so it's probably I mean, a small it's list. Yeah, it's probably, it it's just... probably a small list, and on that list happens to be this one super powerful addictive one. Why he chose to give you that one, I don't know. I know, I don't know either. That's, that's what I'm saying. I don't know, and that's where that's now I'm here, where I'm at. I mean, so, I guess it's not. You know, I didn't have to take it, but if, in the beginning, I didn't really know what it was. You know, you were 16. What the fuck do you know? Um, exactly. <laughs> let me ask you this question. So you've been on methadone for how long now? Since 2001, so that's like 15 years. Aren't they supposed to like taper you off until you don't take it anymore? No, it's all about money. It's just, they, they just want your money. I mean, you know, there are some people, I guess where I live, I mean, uh, they give you that option. Does, does so that don't get you high? Well, after being on it as long as I have, not really. It just keeps me normal. It just makes me feel normal. If I didn't have it, I'd be sick as a dog. I hate it. I hate the fact that I have to wake up and take it. I hate it. Is it I hate the fact that I have to take a yes. It's four hundred dollars a month. And do you have to pay for that one person? Or do you have insurance? Me and my me and me out of pocket. I have no insurance at all. Me and my husband are both on it, and so it's eight hundred dollars a month. 
I assume you guys shared your pills or what? <laughs> well, he had a real bad car accident when he was a teenager. And, well, at one point, um, he was getting getting his own prescription, but... Okay. I mean, yeah, we have. <laughs> okay. Well, um, that's an interesting story. So, and your three kids now are getting near the end of high school and moving on to young adults. Well, I've got, my oldest one is in college right now. Okay, cool. And, I mean, they, they're all doing better than I was in school. They get really good grades, so I mean, I'm really proud of them. Are you advising them? Not to get pregnant at 16? Well, that doesn't happen. That, that, unfortunately, that's something that my <laughs> my oldest one um, right now, as we speak, is four months pregnant. She ran off. She ran off with somebody and for like a month. And she thought she wanted to move out. She thought she found somebody she wanted to, to be with. And then she texted me and she was calling me, Mom, I want to come home. She came home and, you know... I could tell something was wrong. Something was different. I bought a pregnancy test. Said, Darla, you've been pregnant. knocked up, girl. <laughs> yep. And she's yeah, in college right yeah, now. But... Yeah. She, yeah, I know. I used to tell my daughter, it's fine if you get pregnant when you're a teenager. What? She never did it. Look at that. I, would, yeah. I used to tell my daughter, it's fine if you get pregnant when you're a teenager. I'd be kind of excited about it, frankly. I'm enthusiastic about being a grandfather. Everybody else will freak out, but don't even worry about it. It's fine. So I tell her. Because I don't that's, believe in yeah, college. You, know? you, you raised one child without them, you know, suffering anything horrible going on. I'm assuming. I mean, she's still breathing, so you, you did a good enough job. <laughs> Basically so what it means. Now you're gung-ho. You're like, I did it with one. I can do it with all. She, she, chose, <laughs> she chose the more conventional approach rather than having an imposed upon her, at least, to some extent. She at least knows... That if she were to say fuck you to everything and everyone, I would be right here but acting her up 100% of the way, you know? Well, I kept telling awesome. her to go in there to high school. I kept in, in trying to get her to go fuck shit up at high school. She just refused to do it. <laughs> it's like, well, why aren't you going out and partying? It's like, well, I would, but I'm tired of my dad trying to that, live through me vicariously. Different. That is different. I always discouraged 100% any sort of drug and alcohol consumption because being an addictive personality yeah, and somebody who gets addicted really easily myself and seeing a lot of myself and my daughter, I want to make sure she didn't do that as long as I could avoid it. Once she started smoking See, weed, I was just like, well, just smoke it with me then. If you're gonna, if you're sure you're going to smoke weed, you should smoke it with me first before you smoke it out in the world. I don't think she did. I think she probably smoked it out in the world first. But she did. She did end up smoking it here periodically. She went through a little phase when she liked to smoke weed. Uh, like with her friends, but it was like a social thing, like bring your friend over. And, oh, we're smoking weed together, and then uh, yeah. I remember See, that, like, that's that's how boring I am because when I said partying, I didn't even have alcohol or drugs or anything in mind. You're thinking yeah, I grew up. I grew up with my <laughs> parents. Sorry. Go ahead, Cooter. I grew up with my with my mom and my my stepdad. And he smokes pot every day and has since they got married and. That was in 93, but like he would do that. He would smoke pot with me and stuff. And so I've always tried really, I feel like that kind of was the, you know, I don't know if it's the gateway drug. I don't know, but it set me on a path kind of, you know, being a stepdad, it wasn't really kind of a, he wasn't really a father figure to me, but he would sit and smoke weed with me. And then so at, at once a few summers ago, he had my oldest daughter and my youngest daughter and he introduced my oldest daughter to pot, you know, and I, and I had made it clear to my mom, you know, I didn't want that to happen. And this was when she was under 18. So that really upset me. And so then she came back home. This is right before she got pregnant and she started running around and she may have, you know, she may have tried it already, but I don't know. It the, just, the thing to note about marijuana though, unlike every other drug, I have nothing against it. Really. I just, I just kind of, made a big because of how my life went the trajectory right. of my life i, I kind of made it to all my kids i stressed you know how bad you know don't do it you know um, but yeah I, I agree completely don't get me wrong i mean i understand yeah that i'd rather zero than marijuana for my kid right? yeah at least at yeah. least when she's young but i will also say this that what i stressed to delilah is that one advantage of marijuana is that it, it decreases the urge to do real drugs 
is yeah. that it makes you less likely to drink and less likely to do real drugs because you just kind of want to stay at home and do your own thing. Yeah. It's that is vastly, vastly superior to a world where she drinks alcohol. I would much rather her smoke pot all day than drink alcohol. Oh yeah. So I mean, as somebody who does smoke pot all day, and as and you're a fellow functioning, fully functioning drug addict who's not very much impacted by the drugs you take. Of course, your drug addiction is addiction to a drug addiction treatment, which is kind of weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It's not, yeah, it's bad, actually. <laughs> so, it's just weird. It's it's a weird thing. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's a drug addict who can't find the drug of choice anymore. Yeah. Um, for me... Now, if I had to get off of it, I mean, I know that I think, I honestly think pot would help me. Like, if I, when I decide to, I think it will really help me. Because I'll know I'll have to have something. I'll have to have some sort of crutch. I know I will. I mean, I think if they taper you off slowly enough, it should be not terrible. I've been off of it before. And I relapsed. Oh. Uh, well, <laughs> okay. So, is it a drug that... It's one of those things where... Like, for me, alcohol. I... I could... Like, okay, I've been addicted to meth. And I've been addicted to alcohol. I could do meth again. It wouldn't cause me to be a meth addict again. But I couldn't drink alcohol again because it would cause me to be an alcoholic again. Huh. What's your feeling on that with opiates? Is it the kind of thing where you can't well, do it once well, and then my, go back to not doing it again? I don't know. Probably. I, I think at this point in, in this stage of my life, I think if I got off of methadone, I think I'd be done with opiates altogether. I'm sick and tired of, you know, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, you know? Even though I'm not sick, per se, because I'm on it, but I'm, I'm just sick, you know, I just, I want to be off of it. But I'm scared, and so, I mean, any day I could walk in there and say, hey, bring me down. But I don't want to. I'm not ready. But it's 15 years later, you know, am, am I ever going to be ready? In fact, I just got an increase. I'm on 100 milligrams. And, I mean, you could, if I got off of it and somebody gave me a handful of, you know, 10 milligram hydrocodone or Percocet, I could take a handful of them. It probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't even feel it because my tolerance is so high right now. I mean, after so long of not being on it, eventually, I mean, I'd, I could probably take it and get something from it, but hmm. not now. Well, um, that's interesting. I'm not one to judge <laughs> at all about shit like that, obviously. Uh, so I don't think it's, I don't think it's something to be embarrassed about necessarily. I understand how one might be. I, I think you should be commended for just being open about it. Transparency is always way better. You're not doing anything. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't have anything to hide. I really, yeah. You're you're not doing anything unethical, right? The only time that people have good reason to be secret, in my opinion, is if they're doing something unethical. That's how I look at it, yeah. Yeah. So, um... Moral of the story, pregnant women, turn down the hydrocodone. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Tough it out. Uh, okay, well, thanks for watching Talk with Finch People. In this episode, I'm getting this phone call right now. I guess i got to take this call.